I'm here just outside Winton in outback Queensland at the Australian Age of Dinosaurs. And what I've been looking at and what I'm going to share with you is some of the amazing stories of the Australian dinosaur story. These are dinosaurs from around here. Dinosaurs that walked on this land. These really are the dinosaurs down under. I'm standing in front of the bones of my favorite dinosaur in the whole world, Australovenator, and what we see, we see leg bones, we see claws, we see a jawbone, but we don't see the whole thing, of course. And that's what it's like doing paleontology. You have to work out from what you've got, what the dinosaur looked like, what it did while it was alive. What did Australovenator look like once we put all the pieces that we have together. This is Diamantinosaurus Matilde, known to her friends as Matilda. Now there were quite a few bones that we've got from some back bones, leg bones, and the pelvis over here. And right here we have a dinosaur called Savannosaurus, sometimes known as Wade. And the great thing about Wade is that Wade tells us that Australian longnecks, we're pretty sure, originated in South America, crossed Antarctica and came to Australia when it was all part of Gondwana. And this fossilised toe bone here is the very fossilised toe bone that was first found of this particular specimen. I'm here in the dinosaur prep lab and one of the remarkable things you can see of course is that they're shelf upon shelf shelf of these extraordinary huge dinosaur fossils still encased in plaster. If we were to stop digging right now, right today, there'd probably at least another 10 years of work for the paleontologists and the volunteers. Speaking of which, of course, that's something that you can do. If you ever want to get involved in paleontology at a hands-on level, one of the things that you can do is come here to the Australian Age of Dinosaurs and do just that. Say hello to Judy. Um, Judy was a teenager when she died, and she may well turn out to be at the most complete sauropod uh, ever found in Australia from the Cretaceous period. In the area where she was uh, found, where she died, it looks as if she's almost kind of just flopped down with her head and neck on the ground. Looking more closely at Judy's neck, you can see the outline of the neck vertebrae, but you can also see that the neck had kind of, kind of a ribs, and that's one of the reasons why they were able to have such long necks. When we found this foot of Matilda, its toes were all jumbled up. So part of the job of the people in the laboratory is to um, unjumble them. So what we've had to do is to take some of them away, just like this. And then we go to the prep bench and remove the stuff from around them. This here is the femur of a dinosaur currently known as Trixie. And one of the really great experiences that you can have here is to get up close and personal to these dinosaur bones. We're pretty sure that many of the fossils found in and around Winton were initially buried in billabongs. If you take a look at this reconstruction, what's fascinating is the stories that it tells, the stories of this place, the kind of scenarios that might have taken place. All along here, we have the vertebrae of this deceased dinosaur. Compare this vertebrae with the size of my hand. Who do these bones belong to? Diamantinosaurus Matilde, or Matilda to her friends. Whenever you come to the Australian outback, I think it's important to stop and take a deep breath. Breathe in the landscape. And as you do, imagine in your own way what it was like, who the individual animals were that walked, flew, and swam nearby that are no longer here. And think too about those that still are, and all the things we need to do to make sure they don't go extinct.